Persian literature is one of the world's oldest literatures. It spans two and a half millennia, though much of the pre-Islamic material has been lost. Its sources have been within Greater Iran including present-day Iran, Iraq, the Caucasus, and Turkey, as well as regions of Central Asia where the Persian language has historically been the national language. For instance, Malana, one of Iran's best-loved poets, born in Bork or Vaksh, the bulk of surviving Persian literature, however, comes from the times following the Islamic conquest of Iran c. 650 CE. After the Abbasids came to power, the Iranians became the scribes and bureaucrats of the Islamic Empire and, increasingly, also its writers and poets. The new Persian literature arose and flourished in Khorasan and Transoxiana because of political reasons. The early Iranian dynasties such as Tahiras and Samanids were based in Khorasan. Iranians wrote in both Persian and Arabic. Persian predominated in later literary circles. Persian poets such as Fadawzi, Sadi, Hafiz, Atta, Nezami, Rumi and Omar Khayyam are also known in the West and have influenced the literature of many countries. Classical Persian literature Pre-Islamic Persian literature Very few literary works of Achaemenid Iran have survived due partly to the destruction of the library at Persepolis. Most of what remains consists of the royal inscriptions of Achaemenid kings, particularly Darius I and his son Xerxes. Many Zoroastrian writings were destroyed in the Islamic conquest of Iran in the 7th century. The Parsis who fled to India, however, took with them some of the books of the Zoroastrian canon, including some of the Avastar and ancient commentaries thereof. Some works of Sasanid geography and travel also survived, albeit in Arabic translations. No single text devoted to literary criticism has survived from pre-Islamic Iran. However, some essays in Pahlavi, such as Iron E. Name Nebishtar and Babi Yed have been considered as literary criticism. Some researchers have quoted the Shoubi as asserting that the pre-Islamic Iranians had books on eloquence, such as Karvand. No trace remains of such books. There are some indications that some among the Persian elite were familiar with Greek rhetoric and literary criticism. Persian literature of the medieval and pre-modern periods while initially overshadowed by Arabic during the Umayyad and early Abbasid Caliphanites, New Persian soon became a literary language again of the Central Asian and West Asian lands. The rebirth of the language in its new form is often accredited to Ferdowsi, Unshuri, Dakiki, Rudaki, and the generation, as they used pre-Islamic nationalism as a conduit to revive the language and customs of ancient Iran. In particular, says Ferdowsi himself in his Shahnama, for 30 years, I endured much pain and strife. I awaken the Adam by this Persian language. Poetry so strong is the Persian aptitude for versifying everyday expressions that one can encounter. Poetry in almost every classical work, whether from Persian literature, science, or metaphysics. In short, the ability to write in verse form was a prerequisite for any scholar. For example, almost half of Avicenna's medical writings are in verse. Works of the early era of Persian poetry are characterized by strong court patronage and extravagance of panegyrics, and what is known as exalted in style. The tradition of royal patronage began perhaps under the Sassanid era and carried over through the Abbasid and Samanid courts into every major Iranian dynasty. The Kashida was perhaps the most famous form of panegyric used, though quatrains such as those in Omar Khayyam's Rubariyat are also widely popular. Khorasani style, whose followers mostly were associated with Greater Khorasan, is characterized by its supercilious diction, dignified tone, and relatively literate language. The chief representatives of this lyricism are Asjadi, Faruqi Sistani, Unshuri, and Manacheri. Panegyric masters such as Rudaki were known for their love of nature, their verse abounding with evocative descriptions. 
Through these courts and system of patronage emerged the epic style of poetry, with Ferdowsi's Shahnama at the apex. By glorifying the Iranian historical past in heroic and elevated verses, he and other notables such as Dakiki and Asadi Tuzi presented the Ajum with a source of pride and inspiration that has helped preserve a sense of identity for the Iranian people over the ages. Ferdowsi set a model to be followed by a host of other poets later on. The 13th century marks the ascendancy of lyric poetry with the consequent development of the Ghazal into a major verse form, as well as the rise of mystical and Sufi poetry. This style is often called Araki style, and is known by its emotional lyric qualities, rich meters, and the relative simplicity of its language. Emotional romantic poetry was not something new however, as works such as Vizo Rahman by A.S.A.D. Gorgana, and Yusufos or Laker by A.M.A.Q. Bokarai exemplify. Poets such as Sani Anatta, Kakani Shervani, Anveri, and Nazami, were highly respected Ghazal writers. However, the elite of this school are Rumi, Saadi, and Hafiz Shirazi. Regarding the tradition of Persian love poetry during the Safavid era, Persian historian S. Anya Shatter notes, as a rule, the beloved is not a woman, but a young man. In the early centuries of Islam, the raids into Central Asia produced many young slaves. Slaves were also bought or received as gifts. They were made to serve as pages at court or in the households of the affluent, or as soldiers and bodyguards. Young men, slaves or not, also, served wine at banquets and receptions, and the more gifted among them could play music and maintain a cultivated conversation. It was love toward young pages, soldiers, or novices in trades and professions which was the subject of lyrical introductions to panegyrics from the beginning of Persian poetry and of the Ghazal, during the same Safavid era, many subjects of the Iranian Safavids were patrons of Persian poetry, such as T. Amura's Eye of Kakatai. In the didactic genre one can mention Sanai's Hadikat al hakikar as well as Nazami's Magzan al-Azra. Some of Atta's works also belong to this genre as do the major works of Rumi. Although some tend to classify these in the lyrical type due to their mystical and emotional qualities. In addition, some tend to group Nasa Khosrow's works in this style as well. However, true gems of this genre are two books by Saadi, a heavyweight of Persian literature, the Bustan and the Gulistan. After the 15th century, the Indian style of Persian poetry took over. This style has its roots in the Timurid era and produced the likes of Amir Khosrau Dlav and Bainand Lal Goya. Essays The most significant essays of this era are Nazami Aridi Samarkandi's Chaha Makala, as well as Zahiruddin Naso Muhammad Alfi's anecdote. Compendium Juami al Haikaya, Shams al Moali Abol Hassan Gabuzib and Wusham Gur's famous work, the Karbis Nama, is a highly esteemed bel lettre work of Persian literature. Also highly regarded is Sizat Nama by Nizam al Mulk, a famous Persian vizier. Kelali Virginia Denna, translated from Indian folk tales, can also be mentioned in this category. It is seen as a collection of adages in Persian literary studies and thus does not convey folkloric notions. Biographies, hagiographies, and historical works among the major historical and biographical works in classical Persian. One can mention Abul Fazl Behagi's famous Tariq i Behaki, Lubur Bal Albab of Zahiruddin Naso Muhammad al Fi, as well as Arta Malik Uvani's famous Tariq i Jahangir Shayi Uvani. Atta's Tazkarat Tolaulia is also a detailed account of Sufi mystics which is referenced by many subsequent authors and considered a significant work in mystical hagiography. Literary Criticism The oldest surviving work of Persian literary criticism after the Islamic conquest of Persia is Mugadama Yi Shahnam Yi Abu Manshuri, which was written during the Samanid period. The work deals with the myths and legends of Shahnam and is considered the oldest surviving example of Persian prose. It also shows an attempt by the authors to evaluate literary works critically. 
Persian Storytelling 1001 Nights is a medieval folk tale collection which tells the story of Scheherazade, a Sassanid queen who must relate a series of stories to her malevolent husband, King Shariar, to delay her execution. The stories are told over a period of 1001 nights, and every night she ends the story with a suspenseful situation, forcing the king to keep her alive for another day. The individual stories were created over several centuries by many people from a number of different lands. The nucleus of the collection is formed by a Pahlavi Sassanid Persian book called Hazav Afsana, a collection of ancient Indian and Persian folk tales. During the reign of the Abbasid Caliph Harun al-Rashid in the 8th century, Baghdad had become an important cosmopolitan city. Merchants from Persia, China, India, Africa, and Europe were all found in Baghdad. During this time, many of the stories that were originally folk stories are thought to have been collected orally over many years and later compiled into a single book. The compiler and 9th century translator into Arabic is reputedly the storyteller Abu Abdallah Muhammad el Gashagar. The frame story of Shahzad seems to have been added in the 14th century. Dictionaries The biggest Persian dictionary is Decoder Dictionary by Ali Akbar Decoder. He named 200 Persian lexicographical works in his dictionary, the earliest, Farhang Ioim and Farhang Imanakte, from the late Sassanid era. The most widely used Persian lexicons in the Middle Ages were those of Abu Haf Sofdi and Asadi Tuzi, written in 1092. Also highly regarded in the contemporary Persian literature lexical corpus are the works of Dr. Muhammad Moin. The first volume of Moin Dictionary was published in 1963. In 1645, Christian Ravius completed a Persian Latin dictionary, printed at Leiden. This was followed by J. Richardson's two-volume Oxford edition and Gladwin Maldas Persian English Dictionaries, Sharif and S. Peter's Persian Russian Dictionary, and 30 other Persian lexicographical translations through the 1950s. In 2002, Professor Hassan Anveri published his Persian to Persian Dictionary, Farhang e Bozorg e Sokhan, in eight volumes by Sokhan Publications. Currently, English Persian dictionaries of Mano Cherarian Pur and Soleimanheim are widely used in Iran. Persian phrases, 